everybody. Can you hear me? Yes? It's Colin Quinn here, filling in for Anthony Cumia, who, as you know, is uh, resting, as they used to say back in the 70s, when somebody had to go to the Hotel California. Anyway, uh, I'm here to show we have an exciting show tonight. My co-host, of course, you might know him, and you definitely love him if you know him, Bobo. How you doing there, Colin? Hi, Bobo. You ever see that movie with Burt Lancaster and Susan Sarandon, Atlantic City? Yep, I've seen that. Classic movie. Yep, One of the I've, greats. Yep, I've seen that. They don't make movies like that anymore, do they? Nope. No. Believe me, there are movies I've seen that I don't think they would even make, be able to make today. Like, uh, any examples? Uh, I was watching Bad Lieutenant. I don't think... Oh. I don't think they would. They wouldn't even make. They wouldn't even make that movie today. You know, I met one of the girls from the car stop scene like two years after that, and she told me, "Yeah, I was the girl in the movie," and my eyes lit up, and she just had a disgusted look, like because I'm sure every guy she met when she said that scene, their eyes lit up instead of being like, "Oh my God, what a disturbing scene!" We were all like Ugh, turned on by it. So, but anyway, I met her. She was pretty. She was pretty hot. <laughs> uh, I could I could imagine. Yeah. But they I know old this overly politically correct society, they would have been like all over the, the directors before they even made the movie. Yeah, well, in that movie actually they probably would have let it go because in that movie it's the cop that's the bad guy, so they probably political correctness would allow that movie, I think. Yeah. You know that, what I'm saying? Yeah, that's it's true with that. I think I've noticed that this uh, this uh, this mayor, he seems to think he's a black man. The mayor? Yeah, I see. Is this your segue into uh, what we're going on to right now? I like the way you're moving. Yeah. Um, I was going to talk about Keitel for a minute, but okay, let's move on. Yes, I saw that story, actually, where he was late. By the way, he's late. He's He was notoriously late his first year in office, right? Yeah, he's always... He seems to be always late. He's like every. It's like half the people I knew in high school. Oh, where'd you go to high school? I went to Hillcrest High School. Oh, sounds like three quarters of the people you know. But listen, let's get to the. Uh, you're talking about the story with Hillary Clinton and Bill De Blasio, where they made an awkward joke about colored people. Time is that what you're trying to? Yep. Segue to. I like it. I like your style. There's a reason we work so well together. Okay. Um, it was a little ham-handed to say it was like about. But um, okay. Here it is during New York's annual Inner Circle Dinner. Oh, it was an Inner Circle Dinner skit Saturday. So it was an awkward joke about CP time, abbreviation for colored people time. Yeah, as you know from Hillcrest. And uh, here it is. Uh, we, have the, we have the video. Okay, let's go to the video. Thanks for the endorsement, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Took you long enough. Oh, Sorry, Hillary. I was running on CP time. That's not, I don't, I don't like jokes like that, though. That's not that funny. Cautious politician time. I, I've been there. Mm, what do you think? I thought it was a real thing. I didn't realize it was in the middle of that skit, that uh, inner circle thing, you know? Yeah, you think you think he would probably get a free pass to that because his whole family we, is uh, black. Ghetto pass, maybe. Yeah, exactly. His whole family is freaking black. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But um, well, anyway, I think it's just the crowd. The crowd was probably white that were moaning. Let's yeah, that's it. probably what it was. It was probably the white guilt crowd. Yes, that's right. It probably well. You could argue that the whole thing was. Yes, you're right. Anyway, uh, and then Hillary had a couple of zingers in there. Yep, I, I would expect that. Yeah. Well, we got that story out of the way. I thought it was a, uh, I thought it was a, I thought it was fine. It just goes to show how, like, even during an, in a, during, even during a skit, he makes a joke. Like you said, his family's black, and even everybody's like, whoa. You know what I mean? Like, they had to kind of half apologize for it after the joke. Always good for humor when halfway through you have to go, hey, you know, have somebody say, we don't like that kind of humor, and then you go, I know, and then say, oh, politician time, which is a real zinger, you know. What they caught? What did they say? What was it? It doesn't matter. All right, let's move on. I think this is going pretty good. What do you think? So yeah, far. I think it's going pretty good. I give it's us like I give us I give us a nine. But people viewing will probably give it an eight, but they don't know how tough it is. Yeah, City, they don't. We're here cold. Yeah, this is like the first time I did this. We've uh, never done this together. Exactly, and unfortunately, earlier today I didn't have time to get ready for it because I was at work. What do you mean? Well, where were you? Where, where are you working now? 
I'm not going to say the name of the place, Got but it. I do. We don't want to hear. We don't want to hear from Keith if you say the name. He might accuse you. No, of but I don't want in case I don't know if anyone it's watches. Not Donovan's is it? No, but All it's right. it's a it's a beer. It, All right, don't don't you're going to give it away. It's a recycling department at a beer distributor. Oh, geez, you practically gave it away. How much more specific can you get? All right, let's leave it at that. I was in Colorado many times and did comedy there, and it's very hard to breathe. And one time I went there. The only the only really joyful moment I had there was I was at uh, we were in Aspen doing comedy at this festival. And uh, we were all having a hard time breathing. And then our friend, one of the other comedians, passed out and fell down in the middle of the street, passed out. And that man was Rich Voss. So it gave us all a good laugh. Is, is it true that the hotels have oxygen there? I don't remember. I don't know. I heard something like that. My, I have an uncle who goes to Col goes skiing in Colorado every winter. Well, I feel like you're covering up this Voss bombshell I just laid on you. Do you have like a... Are you, is he part of this... Uh, is he a no-holds bar to you? Who, uh, Voss? Yeah, you'll talk about the mayor, the president, but when I brought up Voss, you just well, move well, right past it. Well, the Voss does have his moments. Oh, he sure does. That, that I have to admit, but but then again, when the Voss stammers, it ends up being funny. It's true. That is true. I, I probably would have been cracking up if I saw him uh, faint there on stage. I, I was laughing. It was in the street. It was even funny because it was in the street, so he actually could have hit his head on the cement. Oh, man. Even I, on stage. I, I would have loved to have seen that. It's like saying out of the old... I would have... I would have videoed that and added like old sound effects, like those old Looney Tune cartoons. That would have that would have gotten many hits. Yeah, I would. Know? I would have. I would have been a would have been a viral sensation. And then at the end, you put uh, ACV Alternative Comic Voice, like he puts on Twitter. It yep. kinda adds another texture yep, to that's it. That's exactly. Are we supposed to take a break or just keep going? How does it work on the show? Nah, we we don't take breaks on the show. What? Two hours straight? Yeah, I said the, doing that. the only real, the only thing close to a commercial is the is the live reads. I didn't realize that when I signed up for this. I'll be honest with you. Wait a minute, this is a different scene. Uh, Let's start with page si fifty nine. Ready? This is a scene in our bedroom of our house. Okay, and I'm Karen. You're Karen. The first, you throw my keys. I'll give you my keys. Here you go. You just throw them out the window. <laughs> you, I gotta go out. Uh, not tonight. You're not. Not without the car keys. You're not. Are you nuts? Uh, I don't care. Something's going on. Not again. You're a liar. I look at you and I know you're a liar. <clears throat> he throws a lamp. I need some air. I need a little peace. At least at home. <laughs> Okay. Ready? Now, you're Tommy, and this is Spider. I'll read okay. the other parts. Hey, look at this. Fred Astaire, back back from the wars. Can you believe this guy? That that bandage, it's bigger than his foot. Ah, ah, ah. Spider, you're so full of shit. Even with that food, I bet you can dance. Spider puts his uh, puts down the drink and tries to ignore Tommy again. Come on, Spider! Come on, let's see you dance. Uh, why don't you go fuck yourself? <laughs> oh, Spider! Good for you. You hear that, Spider? The kid's got balls. Hey, you're gonna take that shit from this punk? This fucking low life. This kid got bigger balls than you have any day. He just got shot in the foot. He tells him to go fuck himself. I can't believe this shit. What's, what's this world coming to? You gonna take that shit from that punk? What's this world coming to? <laughs> oh, they don't even have the right lines. It was supposed to be, that's what this world is coming to. All right. Look, this is the, what happens is they give the script, and then when they shoot the movie, uh -huh. this was probably the original screenplay. So they've changed the whole dialogue. All right, ready? Now it's your scene. Ready? Okay. Janice's apartment. Uh, uh. Uh, op open up. I know you're in there. You stay away from my husband. She wouldn't open the door. I rang her bell. Still, she wouldn't open. I rang her bell for two hours, and she kept on hiding. Uh, now you have to do the scene where you hold the gun to me. Why do you have to come over here and straddle me for this scene? <laughs> you just have to, you can't, we won't lie down, but she'll just... Thank you, spider. Thank you, spider. <laughs> Wait, so just kind of sit here. And then lean, you have to straddle me like a stripper, like this. Ready? <laughs> yeah. Ready? Just go here. Are you holding a gun to my head? Use that mic as the gun and then say, Alonzo, ready? 
Go ahead. <laughs> Very click. Okay. Crazy? I'm crazy enough to shoot for you and her. What's the matter with you, Karen? But still, I couldn't hurt him. How could I hurt him? I couldn't even bring myself to leave him. Karen, I love you, not her. <laughs> the truth is that no matter how bad I felt, I was still very attracted to him. Why should I give him up to someone else? Why should she win? I got enough to worry about the street. I got to put this bullshit at home. <laughs> Beautiful. That's it. <laughs> well, listen, the scenes would have gone a lot better if we had the dialogue from the movie. Problem is people know that movie too well. And this was, uh, you know. This, this is probably this, a, or, an earlier draft. An earlier draft, you know. But we did what we could, guys. It was good work. You know, like I said, I mean, you know, ultimately, you know, we gave the fans a little break, a little action. Patty stopped in. Patty, how have you been doing, by the way? I'm doing fine. What's going on out there in Staten Island? Well, I'm getting ready to move again. What? Where? Stand there. Uh -huh. Look in the mic. I don't know yet. I uh, am still looking. I finally got with the real estate agent who actually got me to the paperwork stage. Oh. And I'm going to go see her on Wednesday, and we're going to look at possibilities where to move from to. Oh, but in, in the Sun Island uh, area. In the same general area I'm yeah. in already. Just getting a little, a little more sunlight, maybe. <laughs> uh, that Probably. area is practically New Jersey, Sun Island. Whoa. <laughs> Well, it's fighting words to the people of Staten Island. No, that's Island, just Bobo. that's just my interpretation from when I've been to Staten Island. What it seemed like. Yeah, well, it's sort of a combination of Brooklyn and New Jersey. That's it's in between the two. Yep. It's the bridges. It's the it's the yeah. Yep, and probably probably one of the few boroughs that was smart enough not to vote for De Blasio. Whoa! Oh, I thought you were attacking Staten Island. You were attacking De Blasio. <laughs> See, he's wearing like a hip. I used to dress like that in the seventies. You know. It could have been me. See? But it was you. It's pretty good, right? We used to have those shirts, it was like iron on shirts, but we didn't see the jeans. I had Calendar Girl at home on a single, but he did that song. Oh Calendar Girl, yeah. yeah. Look at his pants. He's got like these were like seventies kind of like flare, like it was right before Gloria Vanderbilt, right before designer jeans. They're not mom jeans. But he makes them into mom jeans, you know what I mean? Bell yeah, they're bell bottoms. Yeah, but they're like, uh, yeah, like 70 foot, like right before the designer jean craze. Like 74, but not Lee's either. It's hard to describe, but just look at that disappointed crowd of hippies expecting to see like some hardcore, like, you know, early days, even before Frampton, you know what I mean? Like uh, Rod Stewart, maybe Faces or some band like that. And then he comes out dancing around and singing and just blows their high. Just all of them went home totally sober, like, wow. And they just, you know, they can't believe it. The crowd's not moving at all. If you cut to the crowd, nobody's moving, they're stunned. There's no dancing, no clapping along, just horrified, stunned people in the mid-70s. Yes, it is beautiful. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, well, guys, thank you very much. It's been fantastic. And I have to say, it was an honor to get to co-host with you. Same here. If I would have met myself at age uh, 16 and told myself, you see that guy you're seeing doing the Weekend Update on SNL? One of these days, you're going to be co-hosting with him, filling in for Anthony Cumia. I would have been shocked if I told my past self that. You're right. Well, it's been a pleasure, guys. Patty, thank you for stopping by. You're welcome. Bobo, fantastic. Yep, it was fantastic co-hosting with you. Always a pleasure to see you. Same here. Guys, like I said, you can stay tuned for, uh, see what's coming up. Oh, New York City Crime Report, 7.30. Tomorrow, Gavin McGinnis, Voss, Luis Gomez, Eastside Dave, and Legion of Skanks.